My motivation for getting involved in the Freedom Then, Freedom Now exhibition was having a conversation with a number of staff at the State Library and they had the interesting challenge of how were they going to mark the 50th anniversary of the 1967 referendum about Aboriginal rights. And we were wondering about how would we do an exhibition that would somehow give more historical context to that referendum and the notion of freedoms won, freedoms lost in Queensland. The core thread of the exhibition was what kind of freedoms did we have, say in the 1950s, that we've, we've lost or that are waning away, and are there other freedoms that we've gained? Working with the State Library Collection, we, we learned a lot that we didn't know. In an exhibition like this, you're trying as much as possible to have some three-dimensional objects. And atypically, the State Library actually has more three-dimensional objects than a lot of people would, uh, would actually appreciate. One of the sort of striking objects in the exhibition is a pink suit that was made for people who were charged under the Vlad laws. Miraculously, this ended up in the State Library collection. I just love the idea of all of these bikies getting around the prison in these pink suits. There are eight themes in the exhibition altogether, and the first theme was vote and protest, because we were trying to understand the 1967 referendum and what its uh, influence had been. A lot of us didn't realise that actually Indigenous people only got the vote in Queensland in 1965, the last state in Australia to give Indigenous people a vote. When I think about defining moments in Queensland, one of the really big issues is the bans on street marches put on by Premier Joe Bajelke peterson It was a very fraught era, tempers were frayed, and a, a lot of very telling cartoons were produced, which we found a great way to sort of convey the atmosphere. Once we'd done vote and protest, we started to think a bit more laterally about what other freedoms are there. One of the themes is just dress. What were the regulations about dress at various times? For a younger audience, I guess the idea that men weren't supposed to appear on the beach in the 1920s and 1930s unless their torsos were covered is a world away. The State Library has some fantastic holdings, especially of Paula Stafford's bikini business that she ran in the Gold Coast in the 1950s and 1960s. A less light-hearted uh, theme was vaccinate, because it basically enabled us to think about how do you pit collective rights and freedoms against the right of the individual. We discovered some old black and white photos of kids being vaccinated in the 1950s and 1960s with what to modernise are rather gruesome big steel and glass needles. One theme is a home of your own where we try and explore whether people can still afford to, to buy a house or not and we contrast the situation in the 1950s when housing was much cheaper and of course at that time everybody was using fibro and nobody realised how, how dangerous it was going to be. So you get these quite fetching looking 1950s homes that are supposed to modernise as sort of death traps. Some of the best objects in the exhibition are items like ration cards during World War II, where petrol was rationed, clothing was rationed, food was rationed, and they're just these little, little snippety things saying, you know, how much butter you're allowed to get next week. We also looked at changing patterns of marriage, so one of the themes is just called I Do. The choice of objects that really did tell the story was a major motivating factor for us. So it was very exciting to discover the library collection included marriage equality stocks, which you could put your head through, and they're, they're in the exhibition. They're really quite evocative. Some areas of the exhibition produce an enormous amount of memorabilia objects and printed items, and I guess that's particularly true of gambling, drinking and smoking. So in the smoking case, 
There's a lovely cover from the Queensland uh, magazine in the 1930s showing a father letting his eight-year-old have a whiff of his, uh, of his cigarette, which is sort of unimaginable now. One of the major themes is called On the Road and In the Air. And we looked at the impact of the car and the truck on life in Queensland and then the importance of aeroplane travel in Queensland because the state is so huge. Now occasionally you get an object which is um, just uh, absolutely perfect and one of the best is a sheet music. The title of it is If It's Hot in Brisbane, It's Cool and Gatter. And that was just a gift because it was relevant to lots of the themes. The final theme is in many ways, I guess, the cheekiest theme in the whole exhibition. It's called Too Rude for Queensland, where we look at uh, waves of censorship. And a lot of the censorship to modernise seems absolutely unbelievable. Pretty polite comic books written by Norman Lindsay in the 1930s are briefly banned through to Playboy covers that were banned in the 1960s would seem really quite tame to modern eyes. The State Library commissioned the artist Adam Lucek to create an image that would somehow sum up some of the key themes of the exhibition. So he's come up with a terrific artwork which has the word freedom scrawled across it. And then we have a figure in the background with a pineapple head. It's obviously quintessentially Queensland. The, the selection of the final objects was a delightful process, but I guess through the exhibition we, we've shown that there are some most unusual aspects of Queensland that you wouldn't find in other states. I hope the exhibition makes people think not only about their own sort of personal freedoms and how they exercise them or not, but also what's happened to other people in society from different um, religious groups, ethnic backgrounds, very different financial circumstances. How does that impact on how you're allowed to have your life?